Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to the 118th episode of Cotton Grower Magazine's Cotton Companion Podcast. This is Jim Stedman, Senior Editor of Cotton Grower, and once again, I'm flying solo as my own cotton companion and colleague, Beck Barnes, is again away on assignment. So the good Lord willing and the creek don't rise, he'll be back with me in two weeks. And uh, I guess speaking of rising creeks, that sort of maybe intimates that rain is in the forecast. But as we're recording this episode, most of the cotton belt is expecting a good period of warm and open weather, just perfect for cotton planting. Unfortunately, that also applies to West Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California, areas that desperately need some rain in order to get a crop in the ground or to get the crop that they have in the ground up and moving. So planting is what we're gonna spend some time on in this episode, uh, planting and the agronomics surrounding it. And joining me in the virtual studio today from somewhere in or near a West Tennessee cotton field is Wes Rogers, technical agronomist with Bayer to discuss how planting is going, what he's hearing from his growers and suggestions for getting this year's crop off to a strong start. But first, just a couple of news items that might be of interest. USDA crop progress report for the week ending May 8th shows that 24% of the U.S. cotton crop for 2022 has now been planted. That's up eight percentage points in the past week, and it is right on the five-year average for this date. We have growers in all cotton producing states active in planting at this point with state-by-state -state plantings ranging from 5% complete in Oklahoma to 98% complete in California. We have eight states that are currently ahead of their respective five-year averages. And this warm open weather that uh, is currently predicted for the coming week should allow planting activity su to substantially increase by the time this report comes out uh, next week. And just in comparison, we talked about cotton at 24% planted. The report also shows that corn is 22% planted, soybe soybeans 12%, sorghum 22%, rice 66%, and peanuts 25%. So it's safe to say the 2022 season is off to a fast start. Now Delta Pines new product evaluator or the NPE program is kicking off its 15th season of on-farm evaluations uh, with a, a diverse group of cotton variety maturities and pest trait platforms for, for possible addition to the company's class of 23. In all, NPE growers across the cotton belt are gonna have the opportunity to evaluate 13 different variety candidates including some stewarded field trials of four Bolgard three Thrive On Extend Flex varieties. Out in the West Texas area, NPE growers are going to evaluate two Bolgard three Extend Flex and two Bolga and just two, excuse me, two Extend Flex only cotton variety candidates that show promising performance potential. And in the Mid South and Southeast, they have five B three XF variety candidates to evaluate, including two lines with root knot nematode resistance. Now there are more than 200 growers across the cotton belt participating in this year's NPE program. And their feedback is gonna help determine Delta Pine's class of 23 cotton varieties, which will be announced in December. Well, speaking of varieties, technologies and, and crop management, let's go ahead and welcome Wes Rogers into the Cotton Companion Virtual Studio. Wes, I know it's busy time for you right now, and I appreciate you taking some time to join us Tell me, where exactly are you today? Yeah, th thanks for thanks for having me today. So, so today, um, and it's it's Cotton Week. It's all hands on deck for sure. But I'm in Union City today, uh, Tennessee today. We're getting ready to getting ready to plant our cotton plot up here at our Union City, Tennessee research farm. Sounds good. Well, tell me a little bit about your background and and kind of what your responsibilities are. Right. So I've I've been in the industry for about 15 years or so. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm coming up on my two-year anniversary with Bayer Crop Science. Um, and, my, and my job with Bayer is a technical agronomist. I'm responsible for all of West Tennessee. Um, and so I work with, with our, uh, our growers, co plot cooperators, and dealers, uh, as well as consultants um, responsible for the brands Decab, Asgro, Delta Plant, Pine, anywhere from planting trials to product knowledge. Yep. And anything, anything under the sun. <laughs> so... It's, it's that old such other duties as, uh, as required, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. Jack of all, master of none. Yep. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> well, I know, I know 
obviously being here in the Mid-South, weather has definitely cleared, over, cleared out a little bit over the past week. Uh, growers have started uh, obviously moving those planters out in the field in a, in a big way. And the forecast, I think for the next week or so looks pretty darn good for planting. The growers that you're working with up in, in this area, what are, what are you hearing from them about this year's crop? What are they excited about? And what are they, they not excited about? You know, uh, they, they are, the good thing is they're excited. So the, you know, obviously probably one of the most uh, things they're excited about I hear is, is the price. You know, we've got a mm -hmm. price that we haven't seen uh, in, in several years and you know what they're trying to do. They're trying to make the most of that. So uh, I'm getting more calls this year. They're really uh, crossing their T's and dotting their I's, trying to take advantage of a good commodity price and make the best of that, maximize that potential. Um, you know, what, what's been tough, the weather, I mean, like every year, it seems like our winter keeps moving back. Um, you know, we got a, we did get a late start. You see a lot of cotton growers out there planting green this time, didn't get a timely burn down in or a, um, an efficacious burn down in. But, you know, um, we've actually had some cotton starting to come up and we're getting a good stand and we're just going to continue to take care of that. So um, there's a lot of optimism out there right now uh, in the cotton market. Well, we, we know that input costs and, and product availability was a big concern going into this season, and I suspect it still is at this point. What are you telling growers, what types of things are you telling growers that they need to be doing right now? And are there any items where maybe a wait and see approach might be okay? So, yeah, the, the main thing the main thing we're waiting on is, is really perfect plant conditions. And the good thing we got the last week and this week is you know what, it's been wet, especially in the northern end of my territory, the cotton geography, because I'm pretty much at the edge of it on my north side. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had to do a lot of wait, just wait. It, you know, it's not perfect conditions. Uh, we got time. We're actually two weeks ahead planting compared to last year. We've got a good dry week. The, for, the big thing is the forecast looks good. You mm -hmm. know, uh, we, we liked, <laughs> we really liked for those soil temperatures to be rough around 85 degrees when we're putting the, putting the seed in the ground. And, uh, and, and to me, more importantly than that is we need a good three to five day window where we can catch some DD60s. Right. Uh, you know, we need, we need 30 or 50 DD60s in that five day window. And right now we've got that. And so right now conditions are good. They're planting three quarter inch deep right on top of the moisture. Uh, and we're setting ourselves up for success doing that. And I'm, and I'm guessing too, with the, with the planting equipment they've got, they're moving pretty fast right now. You know what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> We've planted a couple of cotton plots in the last uh, in the last couple of days, and uh, used to, you know, I I could fill up the planter with seed and catch up on my my plot stakes and markers, and maybe even catch a phone call before the next pass comes back. And I don't have time for that anymore. They're planting cotton six and a half, seven miles an hour, and uh, before I turn around, it's time to refill the planter. So yeah, they're 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 throwing it in the ground quick, and that's yeah. what we we've, we've got to remember is uh, that's why we got to wait. We got to wait till it's right because we forget about the planting power we've got nowadays. We can really do a lot of good or bad very quickly. So <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Now, yeah. on a few episodes of, of our podcast last year, we talked, uh, talked some about the Thrive-On technology and, uh, and some of the general excitement and benefit about the benefits it can bring to, uh, to a cotton field. I know full registration is still pending, but how many varieties are you working with with Thrive On in it in the trials in your area this year? And, and what kind of response are you getting about that technology from growers? Uh, the, the, I guess the number one response is, you know, when is it going to get here? When is it going to get here? Because we, we did get to dip our toe in the water last year with mm -hmm. Thrive On. And, uh, and man, there was, a, there was a lot of excitement there. Uh, we, we saw super, we had an ap apocalyptic year uh, with thrips. And, um, and huge migrations of plant bugs, tarnished plant bugs. And, um, and so we, we saw a lot of benefit from the technology from a pest standpoint. And yes, we're still waiting on that stewardship approval. We're hoping that we're gonna see that in the next year or so. Um, but we were, we were able to get out two varieties this year to, in growers' hands. They're doing that through a steward, stewarded trial called Groundbreakers. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Delta Pine 2131 B, BG, 3XF, which is a which is a mid, and then we've also got Delta Pine 2211 BG3XF, which is a which is an early one, and, and that's and that's in demand in my geography. We like those early varieties, but uh, actually we've had some of those go in the ground the last couple of days too. 
We've actually doubled the number of growers in our area that are uh, getting to experience Thrive On this year. Mm -hmm. So we've got a we've got a lot of optimism there going as well. So that that trait's got a huge benefit for our growers. Definitely from a from a thrift sp standpoint. I mean, it is it is next level, and uh, we're really trying to clue in just how good it is on tarnished plant bugs and where we need to set our thresholds and make those applications. So. Well, it's going to be a big year, certainly, to get get all that data in and, and keep your fingers crossed that everything gets approved and, and we can you can get some some of that some of those varieties rolled out next year. So, I Absolutely. guess my next question is is what's next now that uh, the the planting when the, when the planting window closes here in your area, what should growers be ready for when they put the planter away? So there, there, there's, there's two things that I think most growers have on their minds. Um, so it's finally, you know, we're looking at, we're looking at one of the first few springs that we've had a 90 degree day in early May. And uh, anytime you hit 90 degrees and you're in the month of May, you can just, you know, what, what we always say is bet on the pest. And the, and the two things that we're worried about in cotton right now, honestly, it's Palmer pigweed and, uh, and we're, we got a couple of resistant grasses uh, barnyard grass, jungle rice, those things, those two weeds with the with the weather we, we're getting now, they're on their way. And so we've got to get back across this cotton as, as quick as we can and layer residual herbicides. Uh, there's a lot of guys putting out warrant right now pre behind the planter and, and, and they've already planned that approach coming back with a uh, insecticide, putting warrant back in there again over the top mm -hmm. to keep those weeds, you know, keep the... Uh, keep them down because honestly our uh, our post emerge applications are 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 uh, slipping so we're we're trying to keep them keep them down for sure okay well it sounds good and it's you know it i think people tend to forget what who people who are not aren't involved on it on a day-to-day -day basis tend to forget that gee okay we've got the planting done we can put put everything away and just sort of <laughs> yeah. sit back for for a few days and it just doesn't work that way just sort of you know you, you realize how how far behind you already are in terms of other other management practices at that point. That's right, and um, and you know we've got yeah. we've got the capability now to get across that crop very quickly too. Yeah. Uh, with, you know, sprayer wise, we we got the sprayer power. You know, I've I've heard a lot of growers tell me, uh, cotton growers with a lot of, lot more experience than I have. You know, they'd like to be able to to harvest this crop about as fast as they plant it. I mean, that's 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 where they're thinking nowadays. <laughs> you know, so uh, they can. But they'll find a way for sure. They will find a way. The technology yeah. and the technology is out there right now for fast planting, and I think it's it's also going to be out there for uh, for fast everything else uh, coming yeah, soon. That's right. At this point, well, Wes, I tell you what, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to visit with you. I know you've got some work to do uh, out there, and and here's hoping the rest of the season is going as well as as planting seems to be for you right now. Man, thank you. Right, we're going to get a lot done this week. This is a huge week for our growers in West Tennessee, and we're really looking forward to it. A lot of optimism out there for this for this crop, and, and thank you for your time today as well. Thank you. Hey, appreciate it. You bet. Well, that's it for this episode of the Cotton Companion Podcast. Thanks again to Wes Rogers, Bayer, for joining us, and thanks, too, to you, dear listeners, for joining us. If you like what you hear on the Cotton Companion, please be sure to spread the word and tell your friends about this podcast. Here's where and how they can find us. You can find the Cotton Companion in three easy ways. First, go to cottongrower.com forward slash companion, or simply click the podcast tab at the top of the homepage. Second, subscribe to our channel on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts these days. And three, sign up for our weekly e-newsletter, the Cotton Grower e-news, that's delivered to your email inbox every Tuesday morning. You can do that by going to cottongrower.com forward slash subscribe. Also, be sure to follow Cotton Grower on social media. We are at Cotton Grower Mag on Twitter. And on Facebook, you'll find us by searching for Cotton Grower Magazine. The Cotton Companion Podcast is produced twice monthly by Tyler Hatch and Kim Henderson, our talented colleagues at the World Headquarters for Meister Media Worldwide in beautiful Willoughby, Ohio. My name's Jim Stedman, and I'll be back with you in two weeks, along with Beck Barnes, for the next episode of The Cotton Companion. Until then, stay safe. Yeah, he works, and he works, and he works, and he works all day. God made a farmer.